Ahoy there, Fogo family. I'm your host, Captain Ron. Welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. Today, we are diving into the unexpected delights of pastrami dino ribs on the big green egg, just in time for St. Patrick's Day festivities. We'll start by brining our beef ribs to infuse them with flavor, then dive into creating our homemade pastrami rub, inspired by the iconic Katz's Deli in New York City. After that, it's time to fire up the big green egg. We're gonna use Fogo eucalyptus charcoal, of course, for that perfect smoky goodness. And guess what? We got a special treat for you, a giveaway of our premium eucalyptus charcoal. Stick around and find out how you can win. Let's kick this party off by prepping our pastrami ribs. Start with the best quality meats that you can get, all right? We used prime ribs here. They are absolutely amazing. So it's a USDA prime rib. So they're gonna have tons of marbling and tons of flavor. I'm gonna do something very unpopular. And when I say unpopular, I mean unpopular because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this entire fat cap off of here. It looks like a big fat cap, right? But this is all silver skin, right? That brine's not gonna get through there. We're gonna brine these. That brine's not gonna get through the silver skin. And quite frankly, they have enough marbling inside of them, which is fat that they're gonna be nice and tender as they are. So we don't need this fat cap, so there we go. Trimming is all done. We took all the fat cap, all the silver skin off here. Now we've got nothing but this beautiful meat. Look at the marbling in here. There is so much marbling. These things are gonna be dynamite. Best damn pastrami ever. So next thing we have to do, we have to make up our rub. I mean, not our rub, our brine. That's silly, rub comes later. Anyway, we gotta make up our brine. There's a couple steps to the process, so I wanna take our time and go through it slowly, because I wanna make sure that we don't miss anything because it's all really important. Every step is really important. So let me get out the burner and let's start making our brine. This brine is for one rack of ribs, so we're gonna start with one gallon of water. Four quarts equals one gallon. But if we're gonna start, we're gonna put one half. So we're gonna use a half a gallon of water. Okay, that's right about a half gallon. And we're gonna bring this to a boil while we add some of the ingredients. So let me light this up. Where is the torch? This is how we do it. So we're gonna bring this to a boil. As it's coming to heat, we're gonna add our ingredients. First thing, one cup of kosher salt one half cup of sugar. I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of pickling spice. And here's the biggie, two teaspoons of pink curing salt, all right? It's available in some places. I ordered mine online. If you can't find pink curing salt, you can use the same amounts of pink Himalayan salt, all right? It may not get quite the same color, but it's gonna do the same job. So if you can't find the curing salt, number one, pink Himalayan salt is your answer. Lastly, we're gonna add six crushed garlic cloves. Now all our ingredients in there, so we're gonna stir it up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I recently stirred a pot of chili with this and people lost their minds. So I'm gonna use my wooden spoon here, okay? I'm gonna stir it up. You wanna make sure all that salt and all that sugar and the curing salt all get dissolved in here. Boil, boil, toil and trouble. Oh wait, that's Halloween, Never mind. What are you guys doing for St. Patrick's Day? You got any big celebrations? What I do at this point is I remove this from this heat because I want it to cool down, but yet it's still pretty hot. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour all of this brine solution back into this container. All right, it's gonna help it cool off a lot quicker. So now this is gonna cool off. The reason we wanna cool it off, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this brine and we're gonna inject it. So we want the brine to cool down because what we don't wanna do is this is beef, all right? If we take this hot and put it in here, it's just gonna be a hot beef injection. Where's my breakfast club fans at? You know, when it comes to injectors, there's all sorts. There's, you know, nice stainless ones like this, but it's got a really fat needle on here. So sometimes I don't really want to use that one. This is just an expensive one. I got this at Walmart, actually. I think it was like three bucks. So what I like to do here is take this. It comes with the needle and everything. You use it, you can get rid of it again. All right, there's the needle. All we do is take it right out of there. Ah, screw it into the top and we're ready to go. All right. There. Now, a lot of people might strain their brine first. I don't find it necessary. Just kind of put the needle down into the middle and just suck it up. Suck it up, buttercup. Now, there's different schools of thought whether you want to inject it with the grain with that. I don't know that it matters. What I like to do, I just stick it in there and hit it in a couple different positions. From each hole that I put in, I'll turn it and hit it with about five different spots, okay? You can see it plumping up the meat. Once it's in there like that, you insert it and boom, you can see it plumping it up right away. So just keep injecting it in different spots till this whole meat is injected, detected, inspected, everything. Now, if you notice when I did that, the liquids went everywhere because I wasn't thinking I didn't use our barbecue prep tub. Normally, I'll put it in here, okay? And then pop the sides up so that no spilling goes on because right now my table is soaking wet, everything's soaking wet. I'm not that bright, folks, okay? Even I forget stuff. But if you work in something like this, it makes it a whole lot easier. But now we're on to the next step, and we're gonna need this anyway, because it makes a mess. For brining, you could really use anything. I mean, if you want to, you could just pour the brine right over it in this and set this in the refrigerator. That's fine. Um, these oven bags from uh, Reynolds, they work actually really well. I like to use a two and a half gallon Ziploc bag. I think that this works absolutely fantastic. So all I do is open her up like this, grab my meat, 
and put it down into said bag as such. Easier said than done, okay? But now we've got it down in there and all we're gonna do is set it here and then pour our brine right into the bag. So everything's in one shot. It's in the prep tub, so nice and easy. Now, what I like to do, just because it's in a bag doesn't mean it's not gonna leak, close it up, and I like to leave it in the bag in here, okay? So what's gonna happen now is that every day, this is gonna go for five days at least, every day I'm gonna go flip it over so that we're doing it both. You know, one thing I didn't touch on, I don't know if I really talked about the membrane on the back. You can score it, you can pull it off. For these, I like to leave it on. I feel it holds them better together and it just makes for a better rib when it comes to these beef ribs. That's my opinion. You wanna peel the membrane off, go ahead. You wanna score the back, that's what I do a lot sometimes too. You can do that, I do that when I'm cooking on like a Santa Maria grill. But in any case, this is gonna go in the refrigerator for the next five days. So, one thing left to do, to the refrigerator! One eternity later. Ta-da! And here we have it. Six day brine pastrami ribs. We were gonna go five days, but yesterday we were supposed to film and guess what? Pouring down rain out here so we couldn't film. Anyway, look at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rack of brine ribs. So what I did is every day I went to the refrigerator, I flipped them over, made sure that the brine was hitting every single part of the ribs, the top, the bottom, the sides, everything. We want that to fully penetrate in there. Now, the next step is gonna be take these out, dry them off and hit them with our rub. So let's go ahead, put together our rub. It's based on Katz's Deli in New York City, the world famous Katz's Deli, unbelievable flavor. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you what's in the rub. First thing we start with for our rub is two tablespoons of whole peppercorns and a half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, but we do have to crush them. So you could do one of two things. I got a mocha hete here. That's right, say it with me, mocha hete, where you put them in here and you kind of crush them up like this. It's real great to do. A lot of you don't have one of these. So I like to keep things, let's just say, more simple. That's pretty much simple, right? This is all you need, because we're gonna crush them. We wanna leave them somewhat intact. We don't wanna pulverize them, make a powder out of them, but we do want to make a beautiful, beautiful crushed peppercorn and mustard seed combination. And if you don't have a mocha hete, this is really the way to do it. And now comes the fun part. This is what I like right here and just give them a good crack. You want them cracked, because then what's gonna happen is as it cooks, all those oils are gonna come out of there as it's cooking, creating a lot more depth of flavor for this beautiful aromatic pastrami rub. And we just pour it in here. This is, this is gonna be our official mixing bowl right here. So you can see what we've got here once we're done, is we have all these husks, all these shells, they're all cracked open. That's what we want, we want them cracked open. We're not looking to powderize them or pulverize them. I don't even know if powderize is a word, but it is today. So there's our black pepper, perfect. Next up, we have one tablespoon of fresh coarsely ground black pepper, one and a half tablespoons of coriander powder, one tablespoon of brown sugar. I use dark, you can use light, whatever you want. And one tablespoon of paprika. We're gonna take all of that and add it to our peppercorns. And the last part of our rub, we have two teaspoons of garlic powder. I actually used our Jacobson's garlic salt. I love the addition of that extra little kick. We have two teaspoons of onion powder and we have one half teaspoon of mustard powder. And we add that into the rub now too. And now, all we do is just give it a good stir. Combine it all up, that brown sugar, mash that up. No lumpy rubs, my friends. Oh my God, I can already smell this. They're not kidding when they say it's an aromatic rub. This is an aromatic rub. It smells, ah, it smells heavenly. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is you can see we've got it all cleaned up. It's no more lumps, no more anything. It's all looking good. I'm gonna pour it into a little shaker. If you have a shaker, great. If not, you can put it on by hand. It's up to you, really. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this shaker. Got a convenient little top. They have different sizes. It's made by Cambro, in case you're curious. We don't sell it, but just a good product. Just one good last mixing, just for good measure. Now, our next step, let's grab the ribs, dry them off, and rub them up. Rub them up, hmm. So here what we're gonna do, we'll take it out of here, and we're gonna dry this off really good. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just pat it down, wipe all the brine. You can see there's a lot of the brine, the seeds and everything from the brine, stuff like that. We wanna wipe all of that off of there. We don't want any of that on here. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe it off and dry these off real nicely. If you wanted to, you could even rinse them off. It's up to you. I don't like to rinse any brine off myself. That's just me but it kind of defeats the purpose. We're wiping off liquid to replace it with liquid. It doesn't make any sense. So there they are. You can tell they've got a nice pink color to them already. So I'm, I'm curious and I'm anxious because I've made them before and they are so good. The only thing left to do now is to season them up. It's seasoning season. Real simple. We're just going to give it a nice coating. You can put a mustard binder on here. You can put a binder if you want. I think personally they're juicy enough already from, from being in that brine like that, but we're going to give them a real nice coat and it already sticks really well because they're so moist. Now, just like any other piece of meat, okay, don't forget to get the sides, both sides, that is, not just one. The ends, just as important as anything else, the ends. And 
Let's talk about the last elephant in the room, the membrane. So a lot of people might choose to take the membrane off, not me. I leave the membrane on, I leave this fat on here, I leave everything on the back because I want it to protect the meat and it's gonna make it cook a lot more evenly. So we'll give it a little shot of seasoning. What the heck, why not? All right, now let's go to the grill, fill it up with our eucalyptus charcoal and get this thing going. We're using eucalyptus because the bag is green, it's for St. Patrick's Day. Fogo All Natural Brazilian Lump Charcoal is made from dense eucalyptus hardwood. This charcoal lights quickly, burns hotter and longer than most other woods. The Fogo eucalyptus this will elevate all of your cooks with a wonderful, sweet, and distinctively smoky flavor. This Fogo bag consists mostly in medium-sized pieces and also holds large-sized lumps for longer smoking sessions. It's the perfect selection for all of your grilling and barbecue needs. As you can see, we've got some old charcoal in here from our last cook. I used my kick ash basket, I shook that ash, got all the old stuff out, so we're ready to go. And for today's smoke, we're gonna add bourbon barrel blocks. Smoke your bourbon. They're made from actual aged bourbon barrels. These were used to age bourbon in. It smells like a party in a bag, right Russ? So anyway, we're gonna add two or three into our fire here. And for today's cook, we're gonna be going indirect, so we're gonna put our convector in there. I also have a drip plate in there. No liquids, I'm not gonna add any liquids, because let's face it, these have plenty of humidity inside them already. Just gonna do the convector, the drip pan, and then the grate. Isn't that great? <laughs> All right, now as you can see, we just put the bourbon blocks in as the grill is reheating because it dropped the temperature down once we put the convector and everything in. You got white smoke coming out. We want to wait till it gets to be blue smoke or clear before we put our meat on. Even if it's clear smoke, it's still going to get that smoky flavor. Trust me on that. Our ribs are ready to go on. You can see the moisture has come out, kind of attached itself, made a paste out of the rub and pulled that, all that juices back down into the meat. I told you before I was going to add a secret ingredient. I wanted to wait till I got to this paste point. I'm going to use a little bit of Tina Cannon's European Blend. If you haven't used this stuff, it is awesome. It helped her win the Netflix show, all right? So if you haven't checked that out, you need to. She's awesome. In any case, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit on. Not a lot, all right? Just gonna add it for a little bit of extra flavor. If you don't think this goes on ribs, like I said, she won the Netflix barbecue show using this stuff. So, all right, we're just gonna top it off here. Well, obviously we wanna monitor our tempers, so we're gonna use our meter wireless probe thermometer. Real simple to use. All right, we're gonna put it in. There's a little line that you insert it up to. So we're gonna go right into the middle of the meat. Okay, oh, so tender. Go right up to that line and boom, it's done. And now we're gonna program the app on our phone. And after six long days, we are finally ready to get cooking some pastrami dino ribs. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, right in the center of the grate. And notice I have my meter over here where there's no direct heat coming up. All right, so that's protected. So we're getting an accurate reading. We're gonna put these babies to sleep for a while. Good news, folks. We're there to that point of wrapping. <laughs> oh, not that kind of wrapping. Yes, that's right, it's St. Patrick's Day, it's pastrami ribs wrapping. So now we're gonna do something a little different. Normally what I'll do is I'll take the ribs, wrap them in foil or butcher paper, and put them back on. But, you know, cats, a lot of places, they steam their pastrami for the second half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this tray that we have that has a rack in it. I'm gonna pour some of the brine that I saved in there, put them on here, cover it in foil, and we're gonna do it like that. So let me go grab the ribs, show you how to do this. Three clicks to calibrate them, and let's check them out. Oh, oh, look how beautiful. Oh my goodness. I know I say it all the time, but I wish that you could smell this. So look at that. You could tell they're doing beautifully. We've got that beautiful bone pull. When those bones are pulled back like that, you know it's going well. So again, as I said, we're gonna put them on this rack here. I'm gonna leave the meter in there. But what I did is I saved a bunch of my brine. Oh, look at that, thinking ahead, all right? I'm gonna pour it into the bottom of this pan because like I said, a lot of the major delis, when they make their pastrami, they steam it for the second half. So we're gonna combine the best of both worlds. All right, now we don't want it to be touching the meat, so just fill it to just below that rack. So there we go. That looks beautiful. Now, I don't care that there's a bunch of seeds and everything left in the bottom. We're only doing this to add the moisture, so that kind of stuff doesn't really matter here. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this tight in foil and let this cook for the second half. We're gonna leave the meter in there. We wanna track our temperatures. We wanna go to about that, same thing as brisket, about that 203 range. So, let's go ahead and start wrapping. <laughs> This pan had handles on it, okay, with a little bit of sharp edges. You wanna make sure not to pierce this, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create some steam. We wanna let the, the uh, ribs cook in their own juices and also additionally create some steam with all that brine that we put in the bottom. So we wanna make sure we don't have any holes in it. Now, back to the egg. Being careful not to spill. 
That's all we have to it. Now we just wait. It's going to probably take another hour or two for them to come to temperature, and they should be probe tender by the time we're done. Now, let's talk about something really fun. One lucky winner is going to win one bag of our beautiful Brazilian hardwood eucalyptus charcoal. The stuff is phenomenal. It lights fast, it burns clean, it burns long, and it burns hot. So, you want to win? There's a link below in the description, or simply hit the link right there, and we're going to give one lucky winner away. A little bit of basic information, but there's multiple ways to enter in there. So, the more entries, the more chance you have to win. Now, get in there. Hi, laddies. The luck of the Irish is upon us this St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> anyway, the meter's showing that we're done. So, actually, we started checking it at 200 degrees, and it wasn't quite probe tender, so we kept doing it and doing it. We went past 203. Actually, went to 205, and all of a sudden, that probe just sunk in with no pressure whatsoever. So, we're going to pull them off and move them on to the next step, which is going to be the rest. That's what I need. I need a rest. Oh boy, all right, I want to touch on a couple things here, a couple questions that I get asked a lot. This is going to lead me into this. What do you do when you have to handle hot meat? So this just came off of the smoker, and I want to handle my hot meat without getting burned. Hmm, okay. But what I do is I put on these cotton gloves, then I wrap them over with these rubber gloves. Now, folks, these are available on our website. A lot of the stuff you see us use in these videos is available for sale on our website. If you want to check it out, shop it down below, all right? but. We're at the point now where we can handle this stuff, so let's unwrap it and see what we've got. The magical moment of reveal. Oh my God, look at how beautiful. Oh, and if you could smell them, oh my goodness. They smell unbelievable. So we're gonna take this and transfer it over into this pan, okay? They fit perfectly. We got it to the tenderness that we need. I'm gonna cover it back up, and I'm gonna put it into a Cambro. It's just meant for holding things, for warming. It's a catering box. They are wonderful. Now, this is real simple to rest them. There's nothing to it. All you do is take this, take this, put it in this, and cover it like this. That's it. You can put a towel in there. If you're using a cooler, I highly recommend to use a towel on top of it in there because it's going to keep it it's going to keep it insulated and let it rest. What's happening now is that when it's smoking, all of those juices, all of those internal parts of that meat is contracting and expanding. Everything's going like this. So what's happening now is as it rests, everything's coming back together. All the meats are coming back together. Everything, all the juices are coming back together so that in an hour or so, at least, when we slice into it, it's going to have a beautiful, gushy piece of meat that's going to be plenty juicy still. So. I'm gonna let this sleep for one hour, and I'll be right here waiting for you when I get back. So, we've been resting for an hour, and they are smelling good. I have not peeked, I have not looked at them. Let's do it together, shall we? Oh man, they do look good. God, every time I get it, the smell is just unbelievable, too. I'm gonna go ahead, use my slicer, cut right in, and see what these pastrami dino ribs look like. Oh, they look and smell amazing. Gorgeous smoke ring around the outside, and they're just dripping. Look at them dripping. I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't make this up, folks. I'd say they're juicy, huh? Oh, oh God, oh, yes! Oh my God, look, they're squirting. They are so juicy. Can you zoom in? I'll have what she's having. They call this brisket on a stick. They're not kidding. They are not kidding. So check this out. Yeah, Ben test passed. I mean, that's what you're looking for. You got that beautiful smoke room. We got that beautiful pink color. Now, here's the thing. We want to make sure that it tastes like pastrami. That's the most important part. So here we go. Yes, it does. A little bit of mustard, some sauerkraut, a little Swiss cheese, and some Thousand Island. Oh, my goodness. They are freaking phenomenal. I mean, like, freaking phenomenal. Uh, this is going to be a happy St. Patrick's Day around here. I mean, look how tender that is. Look how juicy it is. It's just amazing. Just pulls apart. Just pulls apart like that. Just the way it's supposed to do. Folks, these are awesome. So, this is our St. Patrick's Day video. This is our pastrami brined ribs. They are amazing. They are just, um, they're, they're a special treat. That's all I can say is they're a special treat. And you know, food on a stick always tastes better. It just always tastes better. That's everything I've got for you this week. Don't forget, we've got an awesome giveaway. It's eucalyptus charcoal, all right? If you want to win a bag, you know how to enter. It's down below or hit that link before. And um, that's everything I got. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out.